So, uh, this person here wants to know, please, hi, please correct me if I'm wrong. So we have to mix a certain concrete. We have a mix for a certain concrete that we need an amount of, say, he's saying 0.25%. Um, I know it's, spelling is different. Don't worry, I don't get, I don't get crazy about spelling as long as I understand what they mean. First, I don't care if he says percent, percent. Percent. I don't care. I get what he meant. Percent. Certain amount of percentage um, is in the is for hydration and the rest of the workability, right? And if we want to use additive, what what we what do we do? We put twenty five percent of water and the rest amount is seventy five percent of hydrate. Well, it's your mix design. All right. So your mix design. You're only activating the, the uh, in this case, I'm thinking you're th talking about Portland. You only need to activate the Portland. Is it white Portland? Is it normal Portland? Which Portland is it? Whatever that minimum is, the activation, you'll still activate. You still need to activate it, all right? So whatever percentage that is. So no, your answer is no there for a second. So you just need to know what you need to activate the Portland, Still needs to be activated, no matter what any plasticizer will tell you that um, you get the change the water content. You get the change the water content, but you can't. This this is not a, an activator of Portland, so you need that amount of activation. Hold on. So here we have plasticizer versus super plasticizer. All right. One says super, and one just says plasticizer. All right, super plasticizer, as it states here, allows reduction in water content by 30%. Each manufacturer will also have its own directions. But it's telling you reduction of water, right, by 30%. I still tell you that follow the, the activation requirements. I'm sorry, this is a liquid. This is a liquid in this one, the powder form is what you're not going to be replaced is what i'm talking about with that with this one the this liquid will act as part of the activator also when you get it in liquid form philly jobs they'll show up with super plasticizer and liquid form um the dry you usually buy dry when you when you find it online the uh powdered mix so the one you were looking at was a powdered mix that you saw and it's it's how it can make it hydrophobic the water so it doesn't stick together and now it can go help with other portland portland content to get it activated instead of two water molecules bonding together and they can't do as much work as if they have more surface area if they're separating a little bit now more portland can get around them it's basically what it's doing all right and then you get less water you have to use to activate your your mix but don't get too crazy about super pesticizers. You can you can if if you if you know how to pay attention to your mix and your and your your displacement of water. So let's just add a seven. All right, don't be a lot of people are scared of sevens. Don't be scared of sevens. You know you need three thousand concrete, then order thirty five hundred and do a seven. All right, you'll still a seven slump. You'll still get your three thousand. I swear you'll still get just 3,000. Here's the difficulty. Is that you'll get great flowability. Be careful of you know, hills and things like that. You're going to not have to worry about it um, setting up too, too fast. Say a five, right? A five slump, oh, yeah, you know, it's great. Well, it starts setting fast down, down here as, it, as moisture. A lot of guys just put it on uh, dirt and rocks instead of putting it on um, plastic. And often, often you put it on hot rocks, which what's that going to do? Just suck the moisture right out of the bottom of your of your concrete, which makes it weaker because it, it's pulling water. It's pulling the water out of your out of your. Uh, it's 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 pulling water from your your mix without it letting it consolidate first. It's sort of like hair drying it. Yeah, let's think of it like that for a second. So your five. Well, at the top, say let's just say the penetration of the heat. If you could stick a probe in there and temperature test it, test it, 
you might find in a four inch slab, let's just do four inches here, that if you temperature probe it, you might find it hotter down here than up here. So you're gonna get a, a, a quicker transfer back down. That's why you see often, uh, you know, people will wet their base to keep it cool. So it's an even transfer of the, um, uh, the bleed water off the surface. Now, bleed water is the extra water, all right? It's the extra water. So if you put a 7 down and you notice you don't need to get much bleed water, well, then you did pretty good. <laughs> 5 would have been worse. It's not going to allow it to, to dry so fast and fracture like a 5 would. 7 is going to dry. It's going to um, dry, let's say. Let's use say the word dry. It's not going to accelerate its shrinkage. A seven's going to not accelerate it much. Now, then there's a the flip side of that. Is that the water creates, creates displaced uh, materials, your Portland, your stone. And when it evaporates off, if, this, if you have your initial set, if you have your initial set um, before your bleed water is finished, then you do have this problem of, of issues. So initial set is when you it's no longer plastic, it's no longer moldable, you're done. Now, of course, I'm not talking about that top surface that everybody mag trials. That, that's not what we're talking about. When you're walking on it and you don't sink into it, you're pretty much at initial set. All right? You're pretty much there. So if you're magging and you finish magging here, and then you start magging down here and you look back and you see all this bleed water above your mag you're still getting bleed water coming up. Not quite, you're not quite finished with initial set. Your stones are also not just finished displacing. So here's the mix. Here's different size stone and sand in Portland. And it's a mix of water. Well, these sand, stone, and Portland is heavier, is heavier. I said is, not are. I mean, individually, they are heavier. Individually, it is. They are <laughs> individually they. That's weird. Individually, but it sounds weird to say individually. It, they is <laughs> um, individual as individual uh, components. They, yeah, it's just weird saying individual and they as individual components. They individually displace downwards to the bottom meaning that they weigh more than there's a there's a there's a uh, a tub and you drop this cement into it with water in it all those heavy particles will go to the bottom of the tub displace displace means to you know displace just what it means to push away the the other products that can't resist it's being pushed away and that is the water the water will displace its way to the top. You see this as what? What do you see it as? Bleed what? Bleed water. That's the displaced water coming to the top. It is not some magical evaporation like I know a lot of contractors believe that is that's evaporation. That's it is just the materials displacing down to the bottom and the water displacing to the top that is your bleed water it's your excess water the water that's not used for hydration of the portland remember hydration of the portland you can say hydration of the concrete if you want but you're not hydrating stone and you're not hydrating the sand you do need a certain percentage of moist sand and you don't want dry hot stone in your mix either that's going to change your dynamics too of your setting product it's going to make a faster set Anyone, any contractor that knows if you use hot water in your mix, you're going to get a faster set. You do that in the wintertime, right? You're speeding up the process. You're getting it up there, you know, that 90, you're trying to get it to 90 degrees with this damn hot water. And by the time it gets to your job site, it's 40 degrees out. You, you know, you might still, with lucky, have 70 degrees with the hydration. 70 degree uh, concrete you're slapping on the ground. You hurry up. You hurry up and you might get a mix that's worth shit. I don't, you know, depends. Um, because you are putting it on frozen ground. You'd really need to warm that surface up. None of you contractors do it. Warm that shit up. Put a thermometer in it. I, you know, get a torch out. Don't burn your forms, obviously. Warm that ground up. There are heating blankets for that. You guys will not do it, I know. 
but I'm offering it to you anyway. I don't care if you use it with a torch, heat the ground up, and I'm talking, you know, get it to your 70 degrees and put a thermometer in it, you know, heat it up, check the surface temperature, check 15 minutes later, heat it up again, check the surface temperature. If you'll be able to maintain surface temperature around 70, oh my gosh, you got yourself a great winter trick there. Uh, because when you put the concrete on it, it's going to see 70. It's not going to, um, it's not going to, um, slow up your, your hydration process. It won't slow it up. It'll be more in line with the concrete wanting to take care of itself. Of course, the surface temperature is going to be different at the top layer. This window, this window, this video, yeah, I've finished. I said once I've made a mistake saying window, I might as well finish it. Uh, this window is getting too long, video. So your answer is, um, you know, the liquid hydration, the liquid product, um, follow the manufacturer. Each manufacturer will tell you what it's, uh, what it recommends. If you're going to use it, if you're going to use it, all right, it is a tough product to learn. It is not that easy. I'm not trying to scare you away from it, but I'm saying you, you got other problems to deal with the surface temperature. Your bleed water issue, you know, your bleed water coming up is what's more critical. Your your design, your mix design. Are you tamping your your concrete down, or are you just pushing it over and just skim it over with a board? That means you're going to wait longer, longer for the bleed water to arise, arise, arise. There, bleed water arise. Where you remember the old tampers. I used to have one back in the day. It looks like a big piece of mesh and the two handles here, a handle here, and they got wire coming this way. That's a tamper. That tamper, you put down yourself a seven, and then you use a tamper, it will push that bleed, push the stone down, push the bleed water off. And you're not changing the dynamics of, you're making the concrete stronger. The concrete will be stronger with the tamper. Anyone tells you that, is, tell you it is not, is lying to you. You're consolidating it, and one of the best forms you can do is tamping. Uh, vibration would be not as good as tamping. Tamping is going to compress it all down. Vibrations can shake things around and have the stones misplace each other and come in different orders, um, whereas tamping is going to be your, your, your best bet. It's going to get you done faster. So you jack that thing up to a 7, you break out your hand tamper, old school, and you tamp it and you screed it. And screed it, you know, tamp and screed, roll, mag, finish, however you want to do it. You got yourself an old school style that will last 1930 stuff, that will last, you know, 100 years. As you look into the Philadelphia sidewalks, they used, you know, the tamper back in the day. Now your sidewalks, you guys wonder why your sidewalks are fracturing and cracking and all this. You just got this... I'm scared to tamp the concrete thing going on. Just skim it on, skim it down, scratch over the top, and um, and with all the honeycombs you see at the top, you then come back and mag it, which you're doing what when you mag it, when you uh, bull float it. You're tamping it. You're pushing those top stones down and displacing the paste and well, some water upwards also. But you're creating a low spot. You know, you just don't get for free all those honeycombs and magically you're able to swipe over it with a mag trap with a bull float and those honeycombs are filled in. Isn't that magic? No, you just displaced those stones downwards and paste came up. But there there's not for free. There, you know, all that honeycomb comes at a cost of, of a dip in your concrete. And if you get it a little more slick, a little more slick when you when you're mag when you're um, when you're screeding it. You know, try a six if you feel scared. But, you know, those fives, you could probably trash those fives. Try a six. You know, before you before you go to the, the, the plasticizer, try running a six, and you'll save money. Try If you have a 3,000 mix design, go to 3,500. Uh, yeah, you might do 6.5. You got a little more mortar there. If you're doing fiber, oh, my gosh, I got another video for fiber. You're going to be totally pissed at me when I tell you how high you should have your water content on fiber. It's not a 6.5. When you're doing fiber, you're going to be screaming out a 12, and you're going to feel real weird about it. 
but you're going to be screaming out some high numbers. I have another video for that to come. Fiber changes your slump drastically. Different fibers do also. But I love fiber myself. I, um, I'm a fiber mix specifier and user. Take care. Love you. Bye.